since we left off, uh, you've traveled for at least a month through all the various dangers that Chult has to offer. Your travels through Lands of Undead have been eased slightly by the company of a Red Wizard friend. Hello. Yay for necromancy. As you all have made your way down rivers, into valleys, over various other areas, you've found maps and snippets, mostly on the bodies of other adventurers gone before you. But through those maps and snippets, you've slowly made your way into what you hope to be the city of Omu. You can just see that the trees appear to cut off up ahead into some sort of a cliff direction, but if you're right, it should be nearby here. Who wants to make the first roll of a survival check? Not me. I'm terrible at it, so yeah, let's go for it. I am proficient in navigator's tools. Would you allow me to do that instead? You can use a compass and a map. You kind of know where you are. Sort of. In the jungle, right? Yeah. The mighty jungle. Uh, 17. Mm -hmm. You definitely feel like you're on the right path, and you're not quite sure where it is, but it should be somewhere nearby up ahead. But it definitely does drop off up ahead. You're not sure how stable the ground is or where exactly it stops, so it leads you to think some caution might be warranted. And what time of day is it? It is currently uh, 3 in the afternoon. Okay, so um, I think we're here, or somewhere near here, is Omo. So do you... I know you need to rest or something during the daylight hours, but it's kind of dangerous to travel at night. What do you guys want to do? I mean, if you can't see in the dark, like, are you sure you don't want me to bite you and we can... It's fun being a vampire, right? You look, you'll be able to see in the dark. We don't have to worry then. Until your skin hurts when you go outside. I mean, there are there are enough trees to cover us. I can make you an outfit like mine. Yeah, well, I suppose I should I describe it. They're that. wearing a um, a, like a, a dark kind of like medieval beekeeper's outfit, where it's like this hood with this basket front that completely obscures their face. All these black robes, like. That very doesn't tell you much about like their body shape at all. They're just kind of hidden in this black mass. Which is impressive in the heat of the jungle. Just saying. Some some determination there. The alternative is the skin burning off, so if we can make it down under the cover of the trees, we can carry on. Okay, so we're gonna do a little Sneak through the jungle, just take our time, look around, not step on anything bad. Because, well, you know, uh, I'm going to take a drink of water and then we'll go. Fine. Sure. How how sure. far away do you think we are? Or do your tools not uh, Maybe not tell you that much? Half an hour walk. So on the map, there's like a dot, right? We're, we're either on or around that dot. There's not really, I mean, it's open to interpretation. We could be 500 feet or a mile from our location, but it's supposed to be right there. Open to interpretation? Now, How do you interpret you... this? Interpret this. See, this map here was drawn by somebody who maybe or may not have been here. This is all speculation and guesses. I'm going off of what the mountains look like around me just as much as I'm going on the picture here. All right. I suppose that's the best we've got. So, as you move forward through the jungle, pushing past dead bits of branches and the occasional cracking twig underfoot, 
the jungle parts ahead to reveal a cliff face leaning down. Sunlight filters in, and both of you feel the uh, slight effects of just sunlight in general. And you find yourself looking down from the top of the cliff into a broad, expansive, dead city. There are rune buildings and stone boulevards rising from the floor of this misty basin. There are col colorful birds flying overhead. You can see a waterfall pouring into the basin off into the distance, creating a river that floods much of the city before draining into a deep rift filled with molten lava. A ruined palace seems to lie a few hundred feet from the edge of that steaming abyss. The Glondom's smiling behind their mask, but then you wouldn't know that. You can't see that. So, did I impress you? Come on. Come on, there it is, see? It does look like quite a lot, quite a lot like home, so uh, I, am, I am impressed and pleased that this uh, place it looks sufficiently dead. It does appear to be currently quiet from what you can see up on the cliff. No uh, denizens moving through the streets. How high up are we, did you say? 100, 150 feet. You can see a set, set of stone stairs just in the distance. A fair bit of travel from you, but reachable, presumably. It's really tempting. It's really tempting to just cast gaseous form and float down. How, how are you two planning on getting down? Doesn't matter. You guys decide. There's stairs, or we can do something different. I, hell, I can jump right off this cliff if you want me to. I, I mean, by all means, are you going to survive, or? How far yep. down is it again? About 150 feet at some points. You're... You'll survive a hundred and fifty foot full. No, but I can jump over the side of the cliff and survive. I'm going to look at the uh, the person in the fully covered thing and say, "I'm quite interested to see someone plummet a hundred and fifty feet to their death." I am as well, but I think we need him. I don't think we want him to die quite yet. Fine. Uh, maybe maybe we should just take the stairs. Sounds fine to me. All right. We go down the stairs. <laughs> Quick, before they Roll for stairs. Roll for stairs. Oh, boy. Uh, with about uh, 15 to 20 minutes of, I would say walking, but it's more of uh, climbing and variously tumbling through bits of jungle, you can see that at the bottom of these stairs, crumbling as they are, they still appear to be holding pretty sturdy, there's a guardhouse standing near the entrance to the city. There are arrow slits cut into its limestone walls, and a lopsided iron portcullis hangs over the gateway beyond which you can see an open plaza ahead of you. That is that first little building next to the stairs here. Uh, I'm going to um, go up to the building and just climb up the building uh, and look over into the plaza and just kind of see what's going on. Okay. Uh, as you climb to the top of the building, uh, you find yourself looking down at a caved-in roof. You're just standing up on the outer edge of a wall. The interior is collapsed into rubble. There are creepers clinging to the walls and high grasses sprouting between the flagstones. You can see campfires. Not recent, but campfires inside of this building. Uh, the walls appear to be covered in some sort of graffiti. Etched, painted. 
Um, I'm gonna uh, yeah. attach a grappling hook. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna quickly ask, how covered is this area? If I walk out to this building, am I in direct sunlight? It is uh, going on later afternoon, so with some careful skirting and use of tall bushes, you can make your way over towards the building. I'll be doing a very like, oh, for God's sake, and kind of like just like skipping and like jumping between bits of shadow. You hear just a, kind of like a slight laugh coming off of the out of the, the closet on Rick's shoulder. I just attach a grappling hook to the side of the wall and chuck the rope down over the side and just motion for them to come up. Are there no windows or like a door? There are arrow slits and there is a portcullis that is hanging kind of on its hinges. You could maybe tear it off if you wanted to. Strength is my dump stat. I'll climb. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm going to try and open the poor cuts. Okay. How would you like to do that? Uh, Just by holding it up. Pulling it. Can yeah. you make an athletics check? That is a natural twenty for a twenty-two. There is. Never mind. I wait and follow him through the door. <laughs> a brief, sharp wrenching of metal as the door comes off. Uh, Clyde, since you're not down there with them, can you make a perception check? Sure can. As this screech kind of echoes through this valley just a little bit. Six. Seems good. Cool. <laughs> I'll just, hearing that, I'll, I'll just like put the rope back around the thing and put it on the backpack and take a quick glance seeing nothing i'll uh just I, I would like to hide though because i do want to be able to cover them if something does happen okay uh, sorry uh that would actually be a 21 stealth check okay clyde seemingly disappears but the door is open and you see a lower view but the same view of graffiti covered walls overgrown and the remnants of old campfires blackened put out some time ago i would like to read the graffiti please sure uh there are several things written in common across these walls which makes you think it's definitely not a ancient graffiti of some sort if it were here it would be in chulti likely uh one appears to say, Fear the Fangs of Rosnazi. Is that one of my things? Roz. No. Eric, I've gone in search of the nine shrines. V. Okay. I should probably write these down. I can give these to you later, too, if you need to, but it is good to take notes. I was too caught up checking my picture of the, the gods from before to see if that one was on there, and then it wasn't. I'll just know. Get later. I'm sure it's not important now. Uh, another says the puzzle cubes are the key. Okay. Beware the frog monster. Mm. Who is Unk? Spelled U N K H. So we're going to meet Unk. All hail the king of feathers. The snakes are not what they seem. And Kubazan equals bravery. That is one of your gods. Shigambi equals wisdom. Also one of your gods. And yeah. well, what was the second one? What you're fine. Kubazan, bravery. 
Okay. Shigambi, wisdom. Okay. And then it says Moa, question mark. Equals question mark or just question mark? Equals question mark. Equals question mark. Got it. That is the extent of the graffiti in here. It appears to be just a mixture of notes left for people passing through to warnings to a few that appear to just be various rude stick figures, but the useful information there and contained. Can you describe those to me, please? Uh, yeah, some of them appear to be doing very strange things with what it is a native bird. It looks kind of like a dodo, but it's about six feet tall. There you go. Whatever flights you make. Is there anything? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to cast a, a look around the room that's like not at the walls, just if there's anything else in here. Uh, outside of the walls, it looks like the ceiling fell in here some time ago. You can see that there was carved stone furniture and there may have been some sort of a wooden barracks attached to it at some point. But okay. for the most part, by the looks of the campfires, if there are people that have found Omu before, this has been a first stop for a lot of them. And judging by the graffiti, over a number of years. Well, unless anyone's got anything to add to the walls, I suggest we move on. Uh, from the vantage of the roof looking out, uh can we so we're where where that red circle is on the bottom left hand corner of the map uh you are at the building just next to it right here amazing so we can see that lower terrace is there anything uh moving wildlife does it look like there are uh i, I guess i'm just looking for any activity that this place is used you could make a perception check or an investigation check if you're checking nearer to you. If you're looking out over the city, perception. All right, I'll, I'll take another gander out over the city. Uh, 15? 15. 15. Uh, let's see here. You might be able to see a well, the minor amount of activity that is uh, bubbling and steaming lava is pretty apparent from pretty far across the way. Beyond that, uh, a large stretch of mostly broken buildings, what appears to be some sort of a walled compound off in the way. You can just make out that inside of the compound, there seems to be smoke rising all right i'll uh, climb down the side of the building and meet meet back up with them hey there's uh there's some walled compound way across the city uh there's smoke rising from it so uh, also there's lava what color smoke white okay so they have chosen a new pope <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. What's a poem? <laughs> uh, it's one of the people who keep trying to kill me. It's very infuriating. Well, that seems like our next port of call, does it not? We don't want war. We don't want to leave enemies behind us, and uh, so we should probably go deal with them. Can we go camp over by the lava? If you, if you wish to uh, go and camp by lava, we can do so. Are you jealous that your skin's not burning like the rest of us? No, I just want a nightlight around two creepy night creatures. As you wish. So you're going to go Hi. camp near lava, question mark? It seems like there's that little terrace that overlooks the lava. It's getting probably late, right? I'm not talking about the terrace that overhangs the lava. <laughs> now, 
that seems a little reckless. <laughs> I mean, what I mean, if there's something there? out there, is there anything written out there? I mean, what do you mean written out there? I just wanted to go look at a lava lake. That's completely up to you. You are back at that first red circle of a building. You tell me where you go. <laughs> Hop down the terrace. Go go down towards the main little city drag and then walk right where the uh, bubbling lava was. Do we not want to check these buildings here first? We should be thorough. Oh. Oh, I, yes, sure. Sorry. I got, I got excited. <laughs> you can go look at the lab, I promise. Hey, we'll make sure you get your lava time. Lava time. Okay, so th these, ne these next buildings, what, what do you wish, what do you wish to do? We just, uh, do a little case out. I'd like to look around for anything culturally significant, maybe any writing, anything that's talk shows of like their their daily lives that we don't things we don't know about them already. Is there anything, anything to be specific learned specific that you are looking for that you maybe even haven't told us, you know, a chalice, a cup, a suit of armor, book. If you find any of those things, I definitely like to see them. Mm -hmm. Just want to locate and preserve the things that might be lost out here possible yeah me too me preserve them yeah mm -hmm. maybe put them in a museum where other people can learn and enjoy them as well i would sell them to a museum i'll focus on the part where both of us want them to end up in a museum do you have like a which museum do you work for well i haven't Oh, if I have a dream of starting my own eventually, but one can't start a museum without owning a few things to go inside it. So, if you would like to make a perception check, unless you have a uh, particular archaeological skill you would like to employ at this point, to kind of take a look at the two nearest sets of buildings. I'll check out for anything in Thieves' Camp while they check out the archaeological stuff, if um, that's what they're doing. Are these buildings, are the roofs intact, and are they, like, are they, like, full, solid buildings? Uh, they appear to be mainly intact. You can see the roofs aren't in the greatest shape, but they, they're they intact. Uh, Rick, are you going inside? Yes, that was the intention. As, as you step through the door, I'm going to go, um, could, a little embarrassing, but could you invite me in? Would you like to come in with me? Thank you. And I will step threshold. Well, uh, as you are looking around on the inside of Rick, uh, you see what appears to be kind of an, a little bit more advanced of a civilization marker than you were looking at uh, originally thinking of these people. Uh, you knew about their large kind of temples and things like that, and they were good at building, but this appears to be some sort of a communal eating and service area and something close to a hotel nearby. Though everything in it is carved from stone or a little bit more on the uh, less advanced side of carpentry, what little is left of the wood, it, it looks like for their time, so long ago, they were a pretty advanced civilization. Is there any, like, writing or imagery on the walls? Uh, we all. Do, 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 do. Uh, there is a little bit of writing on the wall, and from what you do know about ancient Omu uh, language, you know that it is in kind of uh, square form, little tiles. Each one tells its own picture, very similar to the god pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. You think you're looking at a menu on the back of a restaurant wall. 
I'll, I'll make some notes on what they eat. I'll spend some time searching the rest of it for, like, I'm more looking for useful items rather than whatever these, why people are looking for stuff to let people see if it's beyond. All right. Uh, if you want to go ahead and make a perception check, that's fine. Clyde, did you want to make one for the thieves? Can't situation. Yes, it was an eleven investigation check. Okay. Mine's a seventeen perception. Okay, uh, Clyde, you don't see anything at this moment. Uh, with your perception, radical, radical, uh, you spot what appears to be a kind of a small pointed arrow carved into the rock, but otherwise everything in here is just kind of ancient and crumbled. It looks like it's been stomped through quite a few times. Is it carved onto a wall or a table or...? Uh, it's on a pillar, just as you enter inside the door. It seems to be pointing northward. Going to try and press it. Okay. Uh, because that's never gone badly in the end. You press it, and uh, nothing seems to happen. But as your finger comes away, just coated in a layer of dust, uh, looking back at it, you can see that there's some sort of little symbol carved next to the arrow. You don't recognize it. It doesn't look like the things around it. It looks a little like the graffiti. I'll um, rub off all of the dust I can around it. Rick, there's a uh, something on this wall. It looks like an arrowhead. Let's we'll take a look at it. Sure. Uh, taking a look at it, you leave. Make sure I'm telling you correctly what you believe. Uh, you believe you're looking at kind of a tentally, tentacly looking plant monster sort of god shape. Looks familiar. Very much like the representations of Kubazan that you've seen before, but this one has been carved in by somebody very badly with a dagger point. And an arrow pointing north? Yes. Okay. Does it look newer than most of the other um, engravings? Definitely not ancient. Uh, just kind of representative, like somebody within at least the last couple hundred years. Okay. Would I know what it represents? Uh, that depends on whether or not your compatriot with the Omu God Knowledge tells you, or if you want to make a religion check. Religion, 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 let's see. Religion, religion, religion. 22. Uh, it definitely is a very poor carving, but probably representative of one of the nine gods of Omen. You said it was Kubazan? Yes. What do you know of Kubazan? What do I know of Kubazan? Uh, if you would like to add a religion or history check to that, I can combine your two. Let's see what we got here. They're both the same. Let's go for a religion. Well, oh. <laughs> that's Nate. Uh, Kubazan. As far as you can determine with your religion and it being a uh, dead religion, 
you would gather that it's some sort of a nature-based god. Looking at some of the other representations that you've seen of them, you know that they're all some form of animal or other denizen of the jungle that has slowly become a godlike creature that was worshipped by this, these people. Okay. Do we think it's as simple as God is that way? Well, there's one way to find out. We have to take the child to the lava first. That's right. Uh, all right, is there anything else we need in this building before we go on a field trip? Are there any secret compartments that may be hidden from sight? Uh, make an investigation check. Uh, 21. Uh, back behind what once would have been some sort of a counter where somebody might have taken orders and money and things, you just managed to find a piece of stone that's a little loose, and wiggling it out, you see a stack of 20 gold coins inside of there, all marked with not anything that you recognize. It looks ancient. The coins are dusty, but shiny once the dust comes off. It seems to be a uh, kind of forward-facing profile of a man with a large feather headdress on the front of it. Um, I pocket 19 and, and go over with the the one dusty one on top and be like, hey, I found the tip that was lost. Here's an old gold coin with a with a feather guy on it. You, you want that for your museum? Sure, I'll take it and uh, <laughs> holds it up close to the, the closet so I can see and then I can see through. Okay, get a better, closer look at it. All right. Uh, taking a close look at it, it looks just off of base knowledge that you have of the Omu people, like one of the later leaders of the city. Uh, the art that you've seen get occasionally brought out of Chult seems to match up with that. Did you find any more? I'd be interested to know if there were other leaders on their other coinage. Or if yeah, they, I found, they my, marked I found 19 leaders. more. There's nine Can I look at them see. while you're playing near the lava? I'll get to them, I promise. All right. So we look at things while we play near lava. Never play playtime, I'll look at them like. All right. Uh, if you would like to make an investigation check of said money. money. May I aid them? Sure. 16. Uh, you do have aid, so you have advantage if you would like it. Ooh. Sixteen. Uh, looking at it, there's mainly this head. There is one coin that appears to be a little bit older. Uh, it's a little less shiny than the rest of them. But as shiny as they are, you you think these must have been stowed away pretty much as soon as they were minted. Hmm. Interesting. So we are going to have a look at the lava. Yes, we can go look at the lava now. All right. Oh boy. You all make your way over to the lava. As you begin to approach, you hear a chanting. Mm. I don't think it's in a language that you understand. I might speak some weird languages. Is it in ab abyssal or infernal? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, it's in elvish. <laughs> yes, there is a group of halflings who have been living here for. I knew it. I don't want to meet the jungle halflings. They sound a little terrifying. They probably ride raptors. Be sick. Okay. Halfling cavalier incoming. Sir Didymus! Sir Didymus! No. Why? 
just want to know what language you speak. Can we sneak up on the party? I mean, I I can now guarantee that none of you speak the language. So, uh, you walk. Yes. No, I'm just in pain. It's fine. Ignore me. I'll just ignore your pain. Got it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you approach what appears to be some sort of ritual sacrifice in process. As standing out on that uh, kind of ledge hanging over the lava, you see a group of what appear to be at first very small people. You might have mistaken them for halflings of about Clyde's size, but they are all green, covered in plants, and taking another look at them, they appear to be mainly maybe made of plants. Holding between them, they have what appears to be a tiny frog person struggling as uh, the tiny people dance around him in a circle in some sort of ritualistic dance. Do you need to take notes on this? I mean, it... I'm already taking notes on this. It's interesting seeing how other, other people perform uh, their sacrifices. What's your method of choice? I, I tend to uh, let there be a a battle and then uh, I just let other people do the sacrificing and then I'll come behind them and raise up the uh, dead for my master. Sounds like a lot of scheduling. I'll draw my, do the best drawing I can of the little people, the little plant people and the little. You think they're, if they are made of plants, do you think they would burn? You'd think so, but they don't, I was going to say, they don't seem to have any trouble or any issue being near the lava, but I nod at Clyde. Neither does he. As you all are watching, uh, they begin to fully restrain the grung in an a sort of cocoon of vines and roll him towards the edge of the cliff, chanting as they go. Hmm. If there's a better position I can get to see this, I would. <laughs> yeah, like just to make you clear, like none of us are gonna try. And <laughs> we this I'm not. We we're loving that. this. I'm just clarifying what's happening. So, uh, are, you. I think we are all watching with interest this interesting ritual that is happening. Well, you all watch as the ritual continues, and they roll him off the edge of a cliff. You hear a plop, followed by a tss, and some sort of strange gurgling, screaming noise from below. As that happens, you watch as multiple of the little people take running jumps and land themselves in the lava, sacrificing themselves in the fervor of this ritual. The rest of them seem to be content to continue dancing, though occasionally one is picked up and thrown off a cliff by another. Hmm. Interesting. I don't want to camp by the lava anymore. No. I wonder why they bother catching a another as a sacrifice if they were just going to themselves in the whole time I mean, or maybe they weren't planning on it it all uh religious sacrifices tend to have uh some element of ecstasy involved so maybe they have uh it is not planned but they were overcome with their you're just having so much fun you want to take a I mean, death swim it, it is not what I would personally do, but uh, there are some gods who desire sacrifice and maybe honoring them for doing so. Hmm. We, we could try and talk to them. Nope. Could you understand them? Nope. Nope. I couldn't either. I don't think talking would get us very far. Okay, you Unless thought. Write it down. How are you? We can just get them to write it down. <laughs> I can read it. I will take a couple of steps forward and be like, Do you speak common? The dancing slows to kind of that awkward stop as every as the party goes quiet. <laughs> and uh, 
you watch as a few of them kind of turn their head towards you, and one of them seems to let out a guttural scream. Well, and they start taking off in different directions through the jungle, uh, splitting as much as they can, a few of them diving off the cliff in panic. Okay, bye, nice to meet you. Uh, Did you want to go out there and look at the lava now? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll be it back here. I could, I could try and get one of them if we care. If you want to. We, I don't know what our next step would be after catching them, if we can't talk to them. I check that you two be able to understand me. Do they, do they, they look like plant people? Very tiny plant people, yes. No, I was going to try a suggestion, but they have to be able to understand me, so I'm not going to risk it. Maybe there'll be more about. I'll go up there and leave some rations in camp and then gaze out over the edge and look at the lava below. Is there anything of note down there other than lava? Uh, looking out across the lava itself, you can see that that waterfall terminates in it and sends up a large plume of steam. Through the steam, you can occasionally see this little lone island sitting above the lava with a large temple on the top of it. How annoying would it be if I used gaseous form to just fly over there? <laughs> oh, no, it's a temple. Go I almost see what fly temple. as a spell. Then I was like, we're going in a dungeon. I won't need that. I mean... I won't judge it. You want to go see some, see what it is? You're more than welcome to. It is getting on evening, so you can easily avoid the sun's rays. How far is it? Oh boy, howdy! You know, um, <laughs> there's a scale on. I don't know how fast do you, how fast do you gaseous? <laughs> Only ten feet a turn. Okay, there is a it's scale like down at the very six, bottom of the page of that. Like six hundred feet. So that is. 60 turns which is 100 I'll wait here I can't get I can't get there in the time of gaseous form so I won't because I'd bum it to my death and that doesn't sound like fun no um th I mean it's a temple we're looking for god temples right it is however I can't I I can't make it across. So well, there's a up. there's a rim we could walk around and see if there's another way on. I mean, it does seem to be uh, closer to oh. the edge by the waterfall, right? We could work our way around. Oh yeah, and um, you know, there's always um, just stairs that we probably can't see right now. You know, quite. They must have gotten there somehow. You just have to figure out what that was. How that was. So do you want to go around the outside or you want to go city side to the river? Do we want to go city side? We can look at, at that smoke you were looking at before while it's still before it's gone. Well, it's smoke's gone. over there. See, like way over yeah. there, way, way over there. That's where the smoke is. Oh, I thought the smoke was this circle here. Well, it's dark, so it yeah, that's where the circle? Yes. That is where the yeah, so if we go city side, we can go over here and then over here, right? Completely up to you. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Let's go. That's a great plan. Okay. So you're heading towards, from what I understand, back from here, up onto the main city road, and then over to mm -hmm. here? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just making sure I understood. Uh, you can still see just a little bit of smoke drifting from the walled compound that you're slowly approaching. Uh, the gate appears to be laying in splinters. There are scorch marks defacing the building. Hmm. As you look in through the open gate, approaching it from the side of the street at night, you can hear the sounds of the jungle around you, but it is fairly quiet inside of there, except for the sound of chewing. Near the center of the compound of this plaza, it's littered with charred human corpses. One of the corpses is currently being munched on by what appears to be a pack of wild dogs. 
looking at the bodies, you can see tattered remains of what appears to be red robes among a few of them. Uh, red robes that look like my red robes. Uh, it's hard to tell with the amount of burning. I'm going to cast a couple of chaos bolts at these dogs because uh, do I care about my comrades? Uh, probably don't care about them that they're almost certainly dead. I probably want to find out what's happened to them. So yes, I will. I will cast Chaos Bolt and I'm going to twin spell it. So I'll hit two of the dogs or aim for two of the dogs. Okay. Uh, let me just double check something. You must be evil attacking dogs. Don't care. They're not cats. Uh, okay, great. I made no apologies. Uh, so the first one is going to be a 10. No, that's the wrong. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's the same. And the second one is going to be an 18. Uh, the 18 would hit. And so that is uh what did I go wrong? Um why so I need to know what the what I rolled so I can why is it old? Uh, We're holding eight and a seven. Eight and a seven, thank you. So I'm going to choose thunder damage. I don't know why it rolled 3d8, not 2d8. Oh, it takes 2d8 plus 1d6, so that's one. Uh, so yeah, that does uh, 19 thunder damage. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, being that they are just wild dogs and don't have that much HP, you all hear the sad noise of a yipe, and then silence, followed by terrified yiping of various wild dogs now moving towards the side of the compound as far away as they can get of something that just shot one of them when they were just eating dinner. Good. I'm going to go over to the corpses and have a look. As you do that, would you like to make a perception check? Uh, no. Eleven. Okay. Uh, well, while you're taking a look at what appears to be a very burnt corpse, wearing definitely some of your people's robes, uh, can I get a perception check out of the other two? Sure. I don't see shit, Captain. That's a 22. Okay. Uh, well, you don't see a lot because you're distracted by uh, what is not necessarily burnt. It is burnt, but it's been stacked. The rest of these bodies are scattered. So you're busy staring at what appears to be a burnt pile of something with a spear sticking out of the top of it. Not quite sure what that is. But uh, Clyde... You hear a voice say, Is somebody out there? Uh, help? I'm going to go towards the voice and I'm going to tell them there's somebody alive. And I'm going uh, to grab my short sword and dagger and kind of look for them with those out. Okay. Uh, you can see that some of these buildings have been partially collapsed into rubble. Uh, following the sound of the voice, you can just see 
what appears to be a balding human in his later 40s, just wearing a simple vest, kind of what you would take to be servant's gear, uh, partially buried underneath of most of the rubble. There's an arm and a head out. His lips are dry, cracked, and parched. Looks like he's been there for a few days. Is this a trap? I look around. Is there anybody hidden around me to kill me? Make an investigation check. An 18 investigation check. You don't hear or see anything else around. Everything else appears to be aftermath of whatever occurred here. Nothing moving beyond the person in the rubble. Is it like one thing has fallen on him or like a bunch of big things? Uh, he looks to be partially buried in about half a building. That might be too much for my levitate spell. Uh, I'm going to walk towards him and cast friends on him. And then I'm going to say, were you traveling with the uh, red wizards? And he nods and looks at your robe. Yes, they they sent somebody? For us? It just seems surprised. <laughs> no. Oh. Well, of course not. Uh, yes, I, uh, I was hired uh, recently by them. Uh, I have certain skills that can be helpful out here in the jungle and what your people were seeking out here. I could have been helpful if uh, he kind of makes a motion this hadn't happened. And uh, what were they seeking, and uh, how could you have been helped? Well, I can speak Grung, for one. A lot of people find that handy. Uh, and they were seeking... The tombs of the Nine Gods. I, I'm not sure how much information I was supposed to be privy to, but they discussed finding their temples and using them to unlock something. Fine. Uh, and apart from speaking Grung, any other skills? Eh, uh, maybe. I'm a scribe, a translator, uh, he shrugs I'm good at keeping my ears open. So, and I'll kind of raise my voice towards the others. He can speak grung. I, I suppose if you want to get him out, you could. Um, what killed? What killed my colleagues? With what little bit of free arm he has, he points towards the charred pile of remains. Yon T. Oh, good. And I'm gonna walk away. He just looks like he fully expects that. Looks over at you, Clyde, and says, "They pay well." Shrugs. That one don't pay nothing. He's just an asshole. Here, let me get you out of there, bud. I can. I'll cast levitate on a big piece that's on him. Try Without help. Without too much trouble, you all managed to clear the rubble off of him. He's pretty beaten up, but looks alive. Just somewhat dehydrated. Um, did the Yanti take this stuff, or are the rations and stuff still on their corpses? He shakes his head. They uh, made all their corpses into that kind of makes a face. They call it a spirit pole. As you look over towards that large pile of charred remains, there is a glaive that's been thrust into kind of a burnt-out pyre. There are charred snake skulls, blackened inhuman vertebrae lashed to the sphere. On a wall just behind it, you can see that a symbol has been daubed in the ash. It appears to be a snake with a spiral gripping a circle of skulls. This is uh, what that bit of graffiti meant by the snakes are not what they seem. If we see any snakes, 
we should probably kill them. Um, if it's been a minute, he knows I cast a spell on him. And he becomes hostile. Uh, when the spell ends, the creature realizes that you use magic to influence its mood and becomes hostile towards you. Mm -hmm. uh, being that he's not stupid and has worked for Red Wizards before, he eyeballs you. He definitely is aware. Maybe don't, like, sleep next to him just for funsies, but beyond that... For funsies. <laughs> I mean, if he tries anything, I'll just bite him. It's fine. Yeah, I think that's the concern right now. He he knows who you are is the big issue for him, and he's just smart enough to know better. So, yeah. Uh, if anyone happens to want to make a religion check, that sigil on the wall is not an unknown one. Sure, let's give it a shot. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, you are looking at what you're pretty sure is Dindar the Night Serpent devouring the world. You're not entirely sure what that means, but it doesn't sound great. <laughs> and they call it a spirit pole? Uh, yes, they burn their dead comrades and then arrange their bones into a pole. Got it. Interesting. Nice and wholesome. Uh, he, from the pile after you all get him out, he uh, stands up and says, you know, there's a uh, nine shrines in the city they they just figured that out whenever uh, this happened we were planning on which one to go to next i mean since it was right next door we figured why not which one's next door oh just behind us here and he jerks a hand to the west which one Yeah, but, like, did they say which god it was? Oh, uh, that one. Hold on. I know the answer to that. Uh, that one should be Kubazan. Uh, yes, it has, it has a, a stone frog statue in the front of it. And, you know, he's a giant frog or something. I never really followed right. the lore. No, because who would who who would be part of a team discovering something and wouldn't take interest in it? He shrugs. They're dead gods, and they've been dead for a while, beyond finding whatever they held to unlock something. Well, you should hope they're dead if you're going to keep talking about them that way. He shrugs and kind of looks around the city. This was the only place that worshipped them, so... I don't know, do gods keep living after no one's around to think of them anymore? Well, you're thinking of them now, are you not? If I've resurrected a god, I'd hope they'd be, you know, appreciative. You'd hope. Uh, oh. Have, uh, the Yuanti, how many were there and which way did they go? There were over 30. There were 30 red wizards and 20 mercenaries with us at the time. He kind of looks out across the bodies. Uh, there aren't as many red cloaked bodies here as I would have expected, so I don't know if some of them made it out or not. Uh... I believe they're being led by sort of a stronghold here. They they had sort of a battle cry when they were coming in. They hissed it, so I didn't really understand it, but they all said it at once. And it was uh, a name I've seen somewhere before on uh, graffiti. Raznazi. 
Yes, yes. Even when hissing, it sounds very similar. So we have a band of armed and dangerous, well, audio anti armed and dangerous, but we have a uh, band of audio anti that are actively attacking. They seem to have an interest in our information. They took everything off the bodies. They could be well, looking for the same thing, I suppose. Why is everybody so interested in these nine gods? Because people are dying. He kind of shrugs. I didn't see it myself, but they mentioned them holding the nine keys that they needed. To open... It, it'll be a, a vault. It is always a vault. There will be a a treasure in it. Excellent. I can't wait. He nods. <clears throat> we came originally because of the Soulmonger situation. So I assumed it had something to do with that, but I didn't know anything besides... I wasn't supposed to die because they wouldn't bring me back. Your, <laughs> your life is not worth a diamond, don't be foolish. Oh no, I meant like even in the shuffling sort of manner. They're having trouble with that. Interesting. They are they are having trouble resurrecting or reanimating. He nods. They think the influence of whatever's affecting regular mortal souls and those previously resurrected is starting to kind of drain all powers of resurrection. Can I go find a mostly complete body and attempt to animate dead with my Aldrich invocation? Uh, there, there's something very ironic that the Wizard of Fae can't do that. <laughs> it slowly begins to animate. It seems to take almost twice as long as you normally expect it to. And looking at it, it just looks weaker somehow. The, you can see mm -hmm. that the flesh is already growing a little bit papery. It's almost like they're rotting in real time. Interesting. This is, this is strange indeed. He nods. You can see how it's put a damper on projects of your people. I, I've been gone for too long, clearly. So there's a tomb over here. I like breaking into tombs, kind of what I come out here for, so, um... That's a shrine, actually. Oh, shrine. Yeah. Uh, I, I like breaking into shrines. It's just that the... the... He likes breaking into. Okay. Well, it's, it's, uh... As I said, just a shrine we'd identified nine across the city, uh... The tomb, from what I understand, is what they were looking to unlock. While we're right here, we might as well take a look. No, you said they had, there were keys to each shrine? Uh, each shrine we thought might have a key. But they did not, they were not in their possession yet. Uh, no, we had just set up camp here for the night, and, uh, yon P. Well, yes, let's go and have a look. It seems sensible. Okay. If there is power to be had here that will undo the, uh, the issues with, uh, reanimation, then 
we should find it. And if if I can take that power back to Thay, then it will be worth uh, a lot to my master. Rest assured that if that if that comes to pass, my master will reward those that have helped us. He kind of uh, points along the way, and you can see he's got a little bit of a limp. He's definitely on the uh, older side of an individual, but pointing out across the way and through some bushes without going too far into direct danger, he points out what appears to be a shrine back here. Hang on. I have to open up a new map. Da -da 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 -da. We will be looking in the upper left-hand corner momentarily. Please hold. Please hold. Beep. You can see a rectangular pool of murky water stretching before a vine-draped shrine. There are rope bridges that maybe once spanned the water, floating on the surface, tangled in with other debris. The shards of what appear to be a toppled monolith form stepping stones across the middle of the pool. You can see a statue of a stone frog rising above the water. Was there not a bit of graffiti that mentioned the frog? Beware the frog. Beware the frog. You would like to make a perception check. Dirty 20. 15. Okay. Uh, well, with the 15, you're able to see that across the top of the door, it's still a fair bit away, but you can just make out that there are ancient Omu blocks across the top uh, that... Let's see here. Uh, yeah, with that one, you can translate for the most part to read something along the lines of Kubazan urges us to tread without fear and give back as much as we take. Hmm. I'll write that down. Rob, looking across there, you don't see anything particularly interesting. You're just kind of looking. And then you spot two eyeballs sticking out of the water, what appear to be large, kind of uh, uh, baseball-sized eyes out of the top of the water near some of the rope bridges. They blink separately. I have company in the water. There's nothing preventing us from just walking around the water part, right? No, but we we do not know that it is not uh, amphibious. It may be able to come out of the water. Yes, but I'm thinking maybe if we just don't touch the water, maybe it'll... I mean, there does... Find that agreeable. There's some broken fence in the back. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a possible entryway there. You are in a little bit of overgrown jungle, so you're not sure what else might be back there, but not whatever's here. Where on the map were the eyes? Can you read back to me? Are the is this still water? Uh yes. It is very still. It's kind of gross. Definitely breeding some mosquitoes in there. I'm I'm okay with gross. I'm not okay with running. <laughs> Did you tell us what the inscription said? Yes. Uh, Kubazan urges us to tread without fear and to give back as much as we take. Rick, did you, sorry, I meant, Rick, did you tell us that? Sure. I'll probably tell you that. No, Clyde probably doesn't care. Clyde's like, what? 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> You think we need to give some kind of offering? Give back as much as we take. We haven't taken anything yet. No. But come on, scholars. It's a wishing well. I flip one of the 19 coins I got out of there inside and walk past the thing into the shrine. Okay, hang on just a second. Uh, so, uh, in order to, wh where are you walking? Are you crossing towards the middle? Are you just walking past it? I'm going to the left-hand side, walking uh -huh. right over there where the little dock thing was. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, I, w I hope for a safe passage. I'll put the coin into the pond and walk over towards the shrine area and the whole way i'm gonna be looking for traps okay uh well for one you're nope. walking you're walking towards what appears to be a locked gate that's fine uh oh this is this is locked the this gate up here appears to be locked oh okay just uh, FYI, but not that you make it that far yet. Uh, not that you make it that far. Never again. Uh, okay. Uh, there is a little bit of burbling as this, what appears to be a, a frog. It's an amphibious predator of some sort. It's about the size of an elephant as it rises out of the water, its eyes blinking slowly in your direction, you can see that it uh, appears to have four tentacles coming out of the side of its face, a rubbery hide, and a fang-filled maw with what you can only guess is a prehensile tongue as it darts out, exploring the air just a little bit. Fine. Uh, cool. That's all guy then. Wow, okay. Well, that's uh, the spirit. I'm already dead, so you know. Okay, so what it's going to do is stick its tongue out. Boy. I can do that too. It's not special. We've rolled an eight. Uh, oh, nope, actually. Clyde, I need you to make a strength saving throw. No. It auto hits. Uh, it's tongue. It's sure Eleven. Do. Eleven. Bye. Nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the lava was gonna take him for sure. Mm -hmm. You all see Clyde get grabbed by a giant pink tongue. It seems to wrap around him in a cartoon-like fashion pull him into the water within five feet of the frog Hemoth, and then it proceeds to bite him. Man, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's go. Um, You know what? Uh, hmm. Uh -huh. let, me, let, me read this, let me read this thing that I have, make sure. Oh, yeah, it don't matter. It don't matter. Okay. How much damage? 22 damage no plus strength yeah yeah um 28 points of piercing 28 damage as my reaction i'm gonna use my uncanny dodge i'm gonna take 14 Fuck. how about that no you take 14 and and then and then you're swallowed perfect you watch as Clyde disappears into the mouth. Good. On that, Clyde, it becomes your turn. Boy, it sure is acidic in here. This doesn't seem like it would be fun to be in at the end of your turn. What would you like to do? You are currently uh, blinded and restrained. 
I would like to make an acrobatics check to get myself out of this situation, if that is at all possible. If it is not, I will hack and slash with my short sword and with my short sword and dagger. Okay, go for it. Which one? Whichever. Can I escape? Would you like to try to escape and have it be very difficult because you're pushing the wrong way against a creature's esophagus, or would you like to try to cut it enough so that it peaks you up? I will try to cut it enough so that it pukes me up. All right, first attack. You have disad- you have disadvantage on all of your attacks. That is true. Th- that's perfect. Uh, that's perfect. Th- does a twenty-two hit it? Uh, yeah, from from the inside for sure too. <laughs> like I mean, uh, it takes seven points of slashing damage, and with my dagger as my bonus action, mm-hmm. uh, does a fourteen hit it? A 14 just hits? Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, it will then take five points of piercing damage. Okay. And then as my movement, I'll be there. You sure will be. All right. You are there and restrained. It does not appear like it's going to throw you up as of yet. Perhaps you have not harmed it enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, if that is the end of your turn, I need you to hang on. Start of each. Okay, no, never mind. At the start of its turn, uh, remind me to roll some acid damage. Rick, it becomes your turn. All right. Um, he's in a frog. I don't know if that helps um... anyway. How much do I know about? Frog anatomy. Uh, what's the question? <laughs> like, if I were to place a cloud of daggers, uh huh, would I want to like put it near its rear end, to hopefully not hit him, hit Clyde? Sure. Uh, Do I know where the stomach resides in this thing? Uh, you're not as sure where the stomach resides, but this thing has a fairly thick hide, so you don't think you're in danger of hitting Clyde, as long as it's not, there's not a cloud of daggers wherever he comes out of. I'm going to assume he's going to try and come back out the way he came, so I will place a cloud uh, of daggers. Just, just don't put it at the mouth or the bum. You'll be fine. Well, it's kind of, it's... Five feet? Yeah. Okay, so can I draw? Uh, so I'll do it just to like. Here. Is that five? It's right in the middle. Now, if he moves, he'll still kind of be in it. Sure. Well, out of day or some. Okay. And when and where does the damage start with that? His turn, your turn? Uh, I didn't read it. That's okay. I believe it's the star. Mm-hmm. Oh, when it enters the spell's area for the first time, or if it starts its turn there. Okay, so the start of its next turn, it will take 17 points of slashing damage. Okay. It doesn't take it when it the swords or the daggers appear? That's not it? I don't know. You're looking at the spells. No, no they died. Okay. Then it, it will be on its turn, and then that's all I can do, I believe. All right. Uh, with the daggers poised to stab briefly, Fradugal. Um, if I move backwards, am I am I currently adjacent to it? Uh, if you mean, are you within its reach? You're definitely within its reach. Right. Oh, it might have a phone. I'm going to move back here. Hopefully I'm still within its reach. You are. Uh, I'm then going to cast... Mind Spike. Have you mind spiked? Uh, needs to make a DC 15 wisdom save. Nice. It takes 18 psychic damage. 
and I know where it is for the next hour concentration. Right. And it cannot become hidden from me. But mainly it's 18 damage. Okay. Uh, I'm then going to just double check my bonus actions. No, go, done. All right. At the start, next start of the Frog Behemoth's turn, it takes the 17 damage from the cloud of daggers that it is in. And then it's going to tongue somebody. I don't know who. Uh, <laughs> look at me. I didn't make this. Um, uh, odds or evens, Emma? Odds. Does a. Fuck. <laughs> uh, can you make a strength saving throw? No, that's my dumb stat. That's all of your dumb stats. 18. Yeah. 18. 18's not bad. The DC is 18. So you watch as the tongue shoots past you and just kind of goes limp for a second. The side of your face. Slowly oh. rolls back into the mouth. Uh, it looks highly confused because, uh, yeah, that's that's that was its two actions was to use the tongue. So it sits there and goes confused, all three eyes oh. looking around different directions. Meanwhile, Clyde just built different somewhere in the guts of this creature. You need to roll a bunch of acid damage unless they did enough damage for it to puke me up. Uh, you gotta do some damage from the inside for that to happen. Uh, Ow. Yep, that's a you problem. Jump mm -hmm. up and down and make bubbles until it burps. That is. I deep. watched an episode of Magic School Bus where they did that. Take 12 points of acid damage. Hmm. And then it's your turn. All right, well, you know what? Clive is, Clive is nothing but prepared. So he's going to use his fast hands, all right, for a use an object action. And he's going to open up a bag of Caltrops and dump it into this thing's belly. Um, and then I'm going to attack it. And then I'm going to attack it with my short sword. Okay. That's some indigestion. Yeah. That's not a wow. pleasant thing. You've heard of butterflies in your stomach. Now get ready for it. <laughs> Does a 23 hit with disadvantage? Yes. Then it takes 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. 10 points of slashing. Plus, uh, how many caltrops did you just dump out into it? A whole bag, so it covers a five by five area. Um, they do a D four damage, uh -huh. but they, you know, that that's about it. Yeah, but uh, I'm just trying to picture a bag full of them, so it will do sixteen damage, and then it will roll a Constitution saving throw. Clyde, you see daylight, and then feel water as you are vomited into the water next to this thing. I shut my mouth immediately. <laughs> Now you've just got a closed mouth full of grimy water. <laughs> Rick, uh, as your <laughs> compatriot is gurgled back to the surface, it becomes your turn. I am going to cast Armor of Agathus on myself in case it dies that again. And then... I'll just roll the damage again. I think that's all I can do is so I'll just roll the damage again for the Cloud of Daggers unless it decides it wants to move. I need a little big. So, yeah, I'll just suit up and then that'll be it. All right, 17. Bringing us to 101 damage dealt thus far. That's the end of your turn. 
we'll come back around to everyone's favorite vampire, Redoubl. Uh, I'm going to... It feels like... I'm going to do a Chaos Bolt. It's an 18 hit. Uh, an 18 does hit. And that is... Uh, what is that? 8 or 3... I'm going to do fire damage. So it's twenty one fire damage. Okay. Twenty one fire damage as you chaos bolted. Oh, I didn't need to do that. You didn't? No, I did want to do that bit. It's the... Where do you get the rolls up on d, &D Beyond? They just pop up and I can't get rid of them. You hover over the number that you want to look at. So if you're looking at the 11, the 11 is probably what you want to look at. Yeah, it has the formula and the rolls if you just hover over the number. No, it doesn't. I wanted to look at the individual damage dice because I can re-roll them. Yeah, it is three and an eight. Yeah, it has them on there when you hover. No, around. for the for the d sixes. Six, six two, two two. Six two two. I'm going to spend a sorcery point and re-roll those the twos. Okay. Which I get a five and a three, so that is four extra damage. Okay. And that's just my go. Okay. Uh, the frog hemoth, who is still very much alive and now seemingly pretty upset, uh, is going to make two tentacle attacks. Two. One of those is a natural 20. Uh, first one, Rick, does a 24 hit you? Uh, maybe, yeah. That is a number of damage. Uh, 16 points of bludgeoning damage. All right, it's going to take 15 points of cold damage off my armor of Agathas. Nice. Uh, you do feel the tentacle wrap around you as a heads up. Heck. Uh, you said 17? It was 15 damage. I don't know where I got 17. I was just going to give you an extra. I mean, you can do 17 if you want. Sure, I'm not going to stop you. You're in charge. <laughs> All right, and uh, the second one, Radigal, does a natural 20 for 30 hit you? No. <laughs> Super. Uh, it's gonna hurt. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be great. So that's <laughs> what a shot. Thirty-six points of oh. bludgeoning damage as the tentacle wraps its way around you. I'm, I'm, I'm bloodied. Just, just. <laughs> anyone was wondering. We Not. can't heal you. We can't do it. <laughs> I, I, I can heal me. That's fine. Okay. Clyde, we roll around to your turn as both of your friends are currently in tentacles, not yet being dragged into the gaping maw that you just escaped from. All right. Am I in the water? Yes. <laughs> How deep is the water? Because he's only this. Can he swim? Yeah, it's, it's deeper than his head if being oh yeah, this thing was down there. Yeah, it is elephant sized and only when my stocks were up. Swim down, grab and twist. 
Okay, so how far am I like 10 feet away from that little dock area there? Yeah. All right, I'm going to swim over. I assume I don't leave its, its threat range, and I'll try and get up on that dock. All right, that's the easy enough to do. Just so if that were the strain. Right. So if that were 10 feet, that cost me 20, you're saying? Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then I will... It, question for you. If I could get out of his melee strike, would that be five feet additionally backwards? Uh, that still wouldn't put you out of melee strike with his tentacle. Ah. Anyways, um, I'm going to... I'm gonna uh I'm gonna sharpshooter this thing panic like uh with my with my short bow and that, that will be at disadvantage as well because I'm in I'm in melee with it. Okay. Uh, wow. I go off, bestie. And I mean that is it not bad. Does the sixteen hit him? It sure does. Amazing. He takes 17 points of piercing damage from my sharpshooterness. Amazing. Very nice. Reaching 164 points of damage dealt. It is still alive. Is there anything else you would like to wow. return? Die! Please die! Die! Uh, That's the thing. Nope. Can't do anything. Can't, can't disengage. Can't hide. Can't dash. So I'm good. I'm here. All right, rolling back around to Rick Lottom. All right. Um, I feel like I had an idea and then I lost it. Wait, it's holding on to me? Yeah, you're, you're in a tentacle. All right, I'm going to cast Vampiric Touch on it. <gasps> That's my thing. <laughs> well, you snooze, you lose. I get all the frog blood now. I come, I come My frog blood. Does a 25? Sure does. All right, that'll be 12 necrotic damage. And back up to full. That must be nice. Oh, shoot. I should have made a... Um, Concentration save on the last hit for my cloud of daggers, right? Oh, I should have done that as well. Check that before it starts the next turn, anyway. Yes. You got to get a what? Sixteen. At eighteen, so. Yeah, I think your daggers stay. Both concentrating so... solidly. That'll be on its turn. Fourteen knives. Well, I mean. Might be less knives, but that much knife damage. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I can really do from my spot in the tentacles. Well, shortly before it's uh, 14 knife damage, it is Redougal's turn. So. I am going to use my bonus action to use one of my hit dice, which, because I am durable, just heals me for 11 I am then going to try and take a bite of this tentacle that is in front of me. That is a 19. A 19 definitely hits. It does seven piercing damage, and I get, I believe, three hit points back. I don't know. Hit points. It's all of them. I guess another seven back. I am no longer bloodied. No. Uh, I am, however, still grappled. You are. However, uh, that puts it to 183. And strangely, though, it seems to still have one last leg to stand on as it becomes its turn, you watch as the daggers descend upon it one final time. <laughs> Nice, very nice. Uh, and it, it have won 84 hit points. So that 14 definitely knocks it down as you watch the uh, greenish amphibian blood begin leaking out into the pool around you. And uh, the blood in your mouth tastes an awful lot like 
fish? I'm gonna be like. Oh, 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 oh. I don't. I don't recommend that. It's not, not pleasant. I don't think I was in any danger of trying it, but thank you. I'm quite impressed we survived that, especially especially the halfling who was eaten on the first turn. That that was impressive. Yes, that was horrible. Why what was it like in there? there? Uh, very uh, cramped and burning, yeah, like acid burning. Very acid burning. Yeah. Hmm. It's going to be tough to sleep tonight. Glad you guys are here. While you contemplate the uh, trauma that you just endured, Clyde, can you also make a perception check? Oh, oh yes, I can. Maybe. Uh, Ten. It was a lot of trauma. You're pretty traumatized, and you find yourself still staring at a giant frog statue in the middle of this thing, so it's it's not helping your very recent trauma. Uh, no, I was just trying to work out what the image was on the statue, because it, it's like a moor, isn't mm. it? It appears to be an open frog mouth seems to have some depth in it. Um, if you can go in. Clyde, would you... oh, I'm going to cast Suggestion on Clyde. Or uh, is it is it dark yet? Uh, it is dark now, yes. Okay. Uh, Rick will take their, their kind of like basket hood off and then take the, the closet off of their shoulder and kind of like try and like climb out on this is this a like a bridge there's a little bit of broken up dock over there that you kind of get over on the dock and kind of toss a little guy over there baseball chuck the closet Uh, a little nicer but like a softball throw i was gonna make under i like climbing to it usually i wouldn't care but i think he's been through enough uh as the tiny little creature gets down the mouth it is small enough to fit inside the mouth so it goes on a little quick exploration of the inside counting teeth and looking around uh it is able to very quickly find depressed into the tongue of this frog mouth a stone key pops out of the top of it bring it here (laughs) I assume it's terrible little bat wings. Just <laughs> well, I think this solves our front door problem. Hopefully, it does. Um, give more than we take. Should we put something in there? I already did. I, cla- I class suggestion on Clyde. <laughs> uh, you did, didn't you? Maybe, maybe put, get the coin back and put it in the mouth. Yeah, you said you were going back in after that, right? <laughs> yep, I guess I am. I hold my breath a whole bunch and dive down into the thing looking for treasure and a gold coin, not necessarily that one, but if I find it, hey, that'd be great. Okay. Make a... Nine. Uh, down here, there is mainly what appears to be mostly digested bits of something bones. It's not really apparent what it was or what its regular diet is. You don't really see your coin if you're nine. Then um, I'll surface and be like, it's so, uh, it's so uh, bony down there. This thing's been in there for a while. Not I treasure, imagine. just carcasses. I, I imagine you come up covered in that, like, green Algae. duck poo 
kind of grime you get. But instead of being duck, it's a giant frog poo. I have trusted the digitation, it's fine. We'll clean you up. Do you have another one of those coins you could put in? Do we have something else we can put in? Something less culturally significant? Here's a copper. I'll start there. Uh, I mean, I'm not giving up my gold for anyone. That'd be ridiculous. It's a copper. It's literally a copper. You're fine. I, I, I'm not sure there's a copper counts as more than we have taken. Well, if we put the key back, then we haven't taken it. Or maybe this was the first part of the riddle where we're supposed to step without fear or something like that. There does appear to be a fairly rickety but solid space underneath you and Clyde on that corner. You get the feeling that if you maybe quietly stepped through there or didn't run into this monster, it would have been safer to traverse than it originally looked. It kind of fits. So maybe we haven't even reached that part of the puzzle yet. That makes sense. Be my guest. Shall we go in? Locked gate, anyone? Uh, I will search it for traps first. Uh, with a 14 investigation check. And then um, doctor, uh, study, or lecturer person, you want to put the, the key in the door there, Rick? I will do so. Uh, as you open the door with the key, you see what was a magical glyph just briefly flash and then seem to power itself down as the key clicks into place and the door opens harmlessly, swinging into what appears to be a large open room. You can see that the steps ahead of you descend into a ledge overlooking a pit full of sharpened stakes. I am not going in there. <laughs> and your worst nightmare. An alcove on the far wall holds a pedestal with what appears to be a stone cube resting on it. A relief carved into the back of the alcove shows a monstrous frog with tentacles fighting a crane. Wooden beams radiate from the walls at, at about floor height with four foot gaps in between them and carved frog heads extrude from the walls over the beams. There is no floor here anymore beyond the floorboards around the edge of the room. And spikes underneath. Yes, the spike pit appears to be about 30 feet deep. How far is it across? Between 20-25. If we can just like rest for an hour or so, I can pop right over there and grab that. We're not going anywhere. I would like to rest maybe for an hour or so as well. Maybe reattach some of these boiling spots of blisters on my face back to my skull. Can you do that? Uh, I'm just going to concentrate, you know, maybe just think about getting better over the next hour. I, I don't know how this works. Well, I wish you luck. Thanks. I am happy to rest. You are uh, merely taking a short rest. You are generally undisturbed over the course of the hour anywhere near this ledge. You do hear behind the building that you're in some rustling, a little bit of growling on occasion, but nothing seems to come your direction. I have to finish it last. Yeah, you back up to 33 hit points. <laughs> 
That's how many I have. I'm full. My, my full HPs are 38. Oh, I'll brag about it, why don't you? What's your full HP, Rick? 33. I'm, I'm a sorcerer, and I've got the highest HP. For a level five, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. I've got 47. I do have a 20 constitution, but still, that's a bit worrying that the sorcerer's got the highest. You've got it. Uh, lovely. I have rested them. When I get my spell slots back, I'll just go ahead and uh, misty step on over there. Hey! All right. You easily misty step your way over to what stands as looks like a large carved block on top of a pedestal what before you go can i have made the observation that you're going to need to put something heavier than you're taking off because that's clearly what the thing is i assumed so so yeah maybe i should take something with me what's a Hide. Hide's probably heavier. Yeah. yeah, but he's useful. Can I make an approximation of how big that cube is? Uh, sure. Do you have, like, an appraisal skill of any variety, or would you like to just make a general perception check, an intelligence check? I am a thief, thief, aren't you? Yes, I am a thief. May I make an investigation check? Yes. This is the start. Of Not that these have gone well. Uh -huh. A 20. Okay. Uh, you would reckon it to be about half a pound. Okay, I'm going to go outside to the crumbling stone wall and grab a half a pound stone and bring it back inside. What's that in real, real weights? Nobody knows what your KGs are. Like okay. four and a half fish and chips. <laughs> Solid unit of measure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the American, American Americans will weigh in anything mm -hmm. as long as it's not. It is. 226 grams. So you guys came up with this system. We're just still using it. Okay. Do not blame us. To be fair, we still use it. But what we do and don't use it for is random and has no sense or run to it. You buy a pint, you buy a beer, it's a pint. For no reason. Anyways, um, Half pound stone from the wall. Since you're over there, do you want me to just chuck it to you? Or... Sure. I will try to heft a half pound stone shot put style as a 3 2 halfling across the. Please make an athletics check. There's no way this goes. It lands about five feet out into the middle of the spiked floor and then rolls a while around a little bit. Oops, be right back. You get another one? runs outside and steals another piece of the wall comes back in. Okay, here we go. Uh, round two, this can't go bad, right? There you go. Oh. It comes a little faster. Back than you right in the head. Yeah, it just comes a little bit faster than you expect, but you're able to catch it being that it's a small rock about the size of the same cube that you're looking at. All right. Uh, before I move anything, I'm going to take a good look at around this cube if there's anything written on the pedestal anything written on it you'd like to make an investigation check i would love to Thirteen. uh you can see a little bit of things in some of the older omu writing here and there a couple of the squares seem to say something along the lines of Kind of like snitches get stitches, but thieves get poisoned. I see. Hmm. 
this uh you know gives you pause to look around the room for a moment and you are looking at like six metallic carved frog heads with open mouths around you around at like you. how high uh, like if i'm down here like they are uh, about they are closer to the ceiling so they're seven eight feet up on the wall from the floor surface that no longer exists in here like shooting across or shooting down us they like if they were to shoot uh, they all seem like they would be pointed kind of down the mouths don't really seem to be super directed they're like a broad sort of funnel shape don't love that can you hurry up in there i'm thinking Yeah, she's thinking. Uh, He's so thinking. We're just going to have to grab and dash, I'm thinking. I'm going to try and, like, slide if I can so that, like, the if there's, like, a piece pressing down on the bottom that it's always, or, like, a button underneath that it's always pressed down. So kind of slide it across until okay. the rock's on top. I'm gonna misty step right back over there. Okay. That's what I was saying. With your careful placement of the rock, you only hear the briefest of uh, mechanical noises as the pedestal seems to adjust slightly. It looks almost like it's going to start to sink for a moment, and then it seems to level out. You watch as the frog's mechanical mouths close. And the door at the end of the hallway uh, unlocks itself again. You don't recall having heard it lock. Wait, like a door over here? Uh, the one that you came in. The one that used the key. Oh, for the key. that one. Yeah, you That's hear, a problem. You hear it lock and unlock. It oh. locks and then unlocks again? Mm-hmm. Okay. Seems like you've forestalled whatever trap was supposed to occur whenever you took it off. Can I look like underneath the the, the cube I have? Is there anything on the bottom though? Or uh, you were looking at a cube that depicts the uh, well, a frog god, a lot like what you just fought. Kind of a frog god. god. Did we just kill God? <laughs> uh. Definitely something that was influenced to be here by that god. Uh, a lot of the Omu's gods are kind of uh, really OP versions of things that live around them. It's probably not good that we killed it then. Well. But it's just a cube? There's like not anything on the bottom? or uh, Just a cube with that carved into the side of it. Okay. Well, I'm out of Misty Step, so I can't go back over and look. At least until we take another nap. Uh, over there, Unless... you don't see anything besides a little bit of uh, fresco depicting that frog fighting what appears to be a giant ferocious crane of some sort. Like the bird, not the machinery. Cranes are big and scary. Yeah. The thing that popped into my head when you said crane was, was a giant Fraser. Uh, Wow. <laughs> I'm going to be leaning nonchalantly against this pillar, waiting for you impatiently. Mm, I can't be nonchalant and impatient. Do you need to be invited in again? I'm I'm not going into a room full of spikes, wooden spikes. Suit yourself. I'll bring the cube out. With the cube in hand, you are standing outside of the Kubazan Shrine. With uh, the knowledge of what this one looks like, you could think of a few other places in the city that share architecture in some fashions that could be other shrines. Mm. And you can still hear uh, a growling 
and hissing noise coming from the back of the building that you're standing at. We should probably just leave that alone. Growling and hissing. Yeah. As one noise or two noises. Uh, hard to tell. Um, growling and hissing. The dogs ran off and there were snakes. Or you weren't. But no, we can't just walk away from this, can we? I mean, I'd rather not leave your auntie behind us. Well, you saw what they did to your friends. Do you really think we can do anything about it? Friends. Your comrades, your your other w red wizard? Colleagues, at best. Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like there's... 30 we don't we don't have to go and have another fight i don't Chaz, have a lot of Chaz, resources to put into this fight one of you could go gaseous and just see what it is from above just fyi i mean i could do that that sounds like I'd be making myself useful. Yeah, oh, for bad. I also can't because I don't have any third level spells. <laughs> I could go and uh Clyde. Can I sneak around the side? I was just about to ask Clyde if he could sneak around the side. You certainly <laughs> right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I said that while my uh, things were acting up. So I got a 12 stealth check. All right. Uh, as you go kind of sneaking around the corner, you briefly spot kind of one of the cuter sights that you've seen in Chult. This fat-faced little baby leopard kind of looking at you from underneath of a brush, hisses just a little bit your direction. But as he hisses, you see three, four, five snake heads extend from off of its back. They also hiss your direction. Oh, good. Uh, you appear to be looking at a commandon. You've only heard of these. Uh, it's definitely a predator. The one that you're looking at currently is a baby, but... You think it's setting on a nest? I would like to back away swiftly. You make your way back around the side of the building, leaving behind the hissing uh, noises. There's a bunch of death cats with snakes on their shoulders over there. Let's leave. All right. Happy to. Baby death cats. I'm happy to avoid death cats. Easy enough to avoid. Uh, we uh, make a camp. It's getting dark. Where would you like to stay for your first night in Ogre? Do you want to go back over by the lava? Should we just go to Baldur's Gate? Just not, not be here. Do you have an easy way for us to do that? No. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go here, like in in, in that little valley opposite the opposite the bit that looks out over the lava, the bit that goes down and is surrounded on three sides. So we only have one side to defend. Yeah, that sounds great, except for the plant people. They ran away. Yeah, okay. And I can... I do not need to sleep. I can watch. That's unsettling. 
I don't need to sleep either, but I do have to trance for a little while. Well, you, you, you trance, I'll watch, then you watch and I'll rest. Fine by me. I promise I won't bite you in your sleep, but <laughs> like to see you try. You'd like to see me bite Clyde. I people usually have to pay for that in uh, in Faye. It's okay. Good thing I got this mosquito net. It'll keep you both out. <laughs> <laughs> As Clyde takes measures to protect himself from his own party, and the rest of us settle into weirdly sleepless nights, I think that's a good place to end it. <laughs> you got one part of a party that just doesn't sleep.